Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, David. Yeah. As we continue the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus gives us several parables of the kingdom. And in today's parables, Jesus tells us first to sell everything for the kingdom. But then he tells us to gather everything in the kingdom. These are random parables, but give us great insight on the value of the kingdom of God. The first two parables tell us to sell everything in order to, quote unquote, purchase the kingdom. For example, the first one, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy, he goes and sells everything that he has to buy that field. And then the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. And when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells everything he has to purchase the one pearl. So in other words, sell everything so that you may get the field that contains the treasure. Sell everything that you may get the pearl of great price. Sell everything. That's what we hear in those first two parables. Have any of us ever had to sell everything? Maybe some of you have done that before. I don't know. You may say, I've had garage sales, Father. Yeah, but normally, in a garage sale, you don't sell everything. Normally, you sell the excess, right? The stuff that you don't want to deal with anymore. But you don't sell everything. But then I am thinking of families that have to downsize. Perhaps they had a big house where they raised all the kids, but now they are empty nesters and they sell the family home in order to move to a smaller place. They may not sell everything, but certainly a good portion of their estate. By the way, as a diocese, uh, we also had to downsize, just like families. And that's exactly what we did in 2014 when we merged parishes, cutting the number of parishes in half. And we even had to let go of 27 church buildings. It was rough, but it needed to be done. Many of those church buildings had been sold. I am also thinking of those who were called to the sacrament of matrimony. Right at the beginning of their married life, they had to leave everything behind in order to form a new home of their own. It's a form of selling everything without selling everything. But actually, it is about surrendering everything I have for a common purpose. Just this weekend, we had two weddings in our parish, and in marriage, we surrender everything. It is no longer what is mine and what is yours, but everything is ours. Good luck. <laughs> so, for the last two weeks, there is one memory that has been popping in my head, and this is the memory of when I first came to the USA over 20 years ago. And um, for whatever reason, it's been popping in my head. And the temptation back then was, should I stay in Peru? Should I go to America? Should I stay with my family? Should I go to a place where I don't know anyone? Is the Lord really calling me, or this is just my plan and not his? Now, back then, I didn't have much to sell or to get rid of, because I didn't have much anyways. But I did have to leave family and land behind. I remember when I first came to the United States, not knowing what will happen to me, I came with two suitcases. All my belongings fit in two suitcases, right? And now I have a museum. So, so my life has certainly changed. But the Lord is the one that paves the way when we give up everything for the kingdom. I am also thinking about the people that I visit in nursing homes. One thing that comes to mind is that all these folks 
that now need to be cared for by specialized staff, all these folks used to have homes. They used to have gardens. They used to drive their own car. They used to cook in their own kitchens. But they had to give up everything as they prepare for this last part of their journey on this earth. And that's hard. It's hard when you have to give up and sell everything. But also think of Solomon, the king, because he, rather than asking God for possessions, he asked God for wisdom, something that is beyond value. Anyway, so amidst all the experiences of life, um, where we give up everything, Jesus tells us that there is a greater reason to sell everything for the kingdom of God in order to acquire the kingdom. This is how valuable the kingdom is. Are we truly willing to sell everything, that is, to leave everything behind, everything that has value for the kingdom of God? I think that's a serious question. How detached are we of what we have? Now, whether we like it or not, every one of us, 100%, 10 out of 10, will have to leave everything behind on the day we are called home to the Lord, to be in the kingdom. On that day, we will fully rejoice because after leaving everything behind, we will possess in its fullness the treasure beyond measure and the invaluable pearl. So those were the first two um, parables, but there are two more. Then in the, in the second set of parables, Jesus takes a turn because the following two parables insist that we must gather everything. They are the parables of the fishing net and the storeroom in the house. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is, thro is thrown in the sea, collects fish of every kind. Then you pull the net ashore, you start to select uh, what is good and what is bad. Thus it will be at the end of the age, Jesus says, the angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Ouch. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. This is, this is the image of the fiery furnace that Jesus uses in the gospel. This is not an invention of the Catholic Church uh, just to promote Catholic guilt. This is Jesus himself speaking, okay? Now, the parable of the net that gathers everything, gathers everything, is very similar to last week's parable of the wheat and the weeds that grow together until harvest. But this time, instead of harvesting angels, what we have is angels that are like fishermen at the shore, separating the good fish from the bad fish. It's an image of the final judgment. But this separation of the good fish from the bad cannot be done unless the net gathers everything first. So this is the image of that parable. But then Jesus switches gears and he speaks to the scribes. And at that moment, Jesus kind of struck a nerve because I am a scribe. Because as a hobby, I like to write the scripture by hand. So I am a scribe. So Jesus is talking now. Jesus said, Every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. Okay? So the image here is an, a storage space or a storage room. Or if we want to use another image, the pantry. The pantry of your house. Or a closet. Right? So... The head of the household goes to his pantry and gathers everything that is in there, the new and the old. Has it ever happened to you when you do your spring cleaning and you, and you venture out to clean up your pantry and you pull everything out of your pantry and you find that one can of tuna that expired in 1986. Yeah. 
You gather everything and you clean up your pantry. I bet you did that during COVID, right? Because you couldn't go anywhere. So you went through all your closets, then the pantry. You ran out of closets. Then you went through the basement. Once you were done with the basement, you went through the garage, etc. until you ran out of things to clean up and then everything reopened again and you forgot about all your pantries and your garages and your closets. And when I say you, I, I'm speaking about myself too, okay? But Jesus says that the scribes that are trained for the kingdom of God, they are like the head of the household that cleans up his pantry by gathering what is new and what is old. So I wonder why, why the scribes have to be like the, the head of the household. And the reason is because the scribes were the ones that had the capacity to share the stories, the old ones and the new ones. In the first century, 98% of the people were illiterate. They were not able to read or write. Writing and reading was a profession, and that profession belonged to the scribes. So the scribes were professional people, and they had the capacity of sharing the stories in a written form for their posterity. Because of the scribes from whom we learn the old and new stories, because of those scribes, we have a Bible. If it wasn't for the scribes, we will not have an Old Testament or a New Testament. Without the scribes, we would not have our sacred scriptures. So what does this mean for you and for me? We are these scribes because we have the capacity of telling the stories to the next generation. So all of us here, we all have someone in our lives that deserves to hear about God from us. Jesus is commanding us to tell the stories, the new stories and the old stories. Jesus is commanding us to tell our story of how we found the treasure and the pearl and that we cannot conceive our lives without God. Like the scribes about whom Jesus speaks, we must tell the stories. If we don't do it, who will? Or do we think that faith just comes out of the blue? No, it doesn't work that way. So please, don't miss any opportunity to tell your story of faith, old and new, when you encounter other people, especially those that struggle with faith. This is what evangelization is all about. Gather from the pantry of your life the new and the old, the good and the bad. Yes, others can learn even from our mistakes, and they will learn even more from our blessings because the harvest is coming whether we like it or not. The separation of the good fish from the bad is coming at the end of our individual lives in what we call the personal judgment and at the end of time in what we call the final judgment. They will happen. But please, in the meantime, don't stop telling the stories. In Jesus, we have found the treasure and the pearl of the kingdom. And in him, we gather everything, the good and the bad we have done. And because we love Jesus, we share the stories that have changed our lives for the better, the new ones and the old ones. In the end for us, the kingdom is not a place, but the kingdom is a person, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.